Welcome to another fabulous and exciting edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is the show that makes your technology simple and hopefully makes you giggle along the way. I hope so. I make myself giggle. I look at, I look at the shows and I laugh my guts out. Well, that's one person. <laughs> Can't help it. We've got a funny topic for you today, friend. Oh, no. Not, oh, power, Video cards. Power supplies part two. Oh, come on. Power supplies were cool. <laughs> yeah. It was a good show. But anyway, so what, yeah, what's, what's on today? We're going to do graphics cards. So you're, uh, huh? you're in the store and you're looking at that copy of Doom 12 or yeah. Quake 16 or, or Halo Legend Suit Larry 9. 29. Yeah, and, and it requires a whole pile of great graphics capability and your system's just not capable anymore. Right. We're going to show you what you need to know if you're going to upgrade your video card. Upgrading your video, video card, ladies and gentlemen. How exciting is that? Call on mom and dad and uh, grandpa and grandma because they're going to want to know. Make sure, you, make sure they don't stick their fingers in the fan while it's running. That's right. Safety tips as well for upgrading your uh, video card. All right, so uh, let's take a look at a message from our sponsor and we'll be right back. It's one of power supplies. Dude. Okay, no, please don't let this be Power Supplies Part 2. <laughs> it's not Power Supplies Part 2. There's nothing wrong with Power Supplies. you got to know. No, it was an intriguing episode. Although, just... oddly enough, if you're upgrading your video card, you might need to upgrade your Power Supply, so I'll send you back to that episode and find out how to upgrade your Power Supply, and that's all we're going to say, because apparently it's boring Andy to tears. I know, I don't know. I know, it's just, it just doesn't grab me right there. But anyway, it's good. No, it was a great episode. I like to do this when I... Anyway. And that's when all the dust comes out. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's upda- up- upgrade our um, our video card. What technologies are we going to be looking at uh, that we have to consider, or where do we start? Where do we start in all this? Because it's very complicated. Well, the first thing you need to figure out is the graphics card that you currently have in your system. Is it integrated onto the motherboard, or is it a separate card? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so what you're going to want to going to want to do is check out your motherboard. This is going to be the back of your motherboard right here. It doesn't look like it because it's not in the case right now. Yeah. But in general, if it's sticking out this way, like this, it's a graphics card. Ah, yeah. If it's sticking here in this little block with the other ones here, it is a integrated, which means right. it's on the motherboard and it's not upgradable in and of itself. Right. Now that's a, that can be a bad thing, right? Especially because uh, integrated graphics adapters on the motherboard actually share system RAM. They share the system RAM. Right. Generally, they're a lot less capable than the higher-end graphics boards that are out there for add-in. Right. I understand that the PCI Express motherboards actually have a 3D rendering capability. The mm-hmm. graphics cards are integrated. Yep. Some of the previous ones did as well. Yeah. In, in general, they're, they're less capable. Some of the new ones are actually pretty good. So yeah. if what you're looking at uh, for your computing experiences like looking at the uh, internet, browsing, email, all that. You don't really need to upgrade your graphics card unless it's really, really low end and everything looks awful. Right. Okay, so, so, so first of all, figure that out. Is it on the motherboard or is it separate? Right. What's the next step? Next step is to figure out if it is separate and you want to upgrade. Uh, even if you want to upgrade, you can generally upgrade an integrated card by adding a new card into one right. of the slots. And that'll oh. often shut the old one off on your motherboard. Automatically. Right. And then you'll have the power of the, the card instead of the one that's on your board. Oh, right, okay. Now, so um, the BIOS will automatically recognize, oh, there's an outboard uh, adapter, and so I'm gonna, it's going to turn off. Yeah, in a lot of right. cases it will right. do that. Some cases it won't. You'll actually have to shut it off manually by going into the BIOS and turning it right. off. Right. Okay, well, we showed you how to get into the BIOS in a recent episode, mm-hmm. back in episode, I don't know, 39, 38. Go to the website. Um, but we showed you how to do that. But the big but, trick is, yeah, just if you have a, a card and you put it in and it uh, works, you just move your... Uh, you move your uh, monitor cable from the one on your board yeah. over to the new one. If it works fine, you're done. Okay. Good. If it doesn't, then you have to swap it back and go back into the BIOS. Okay. Now, is this, so now I know that there are different types of slots on the mother. There's PCI Express, there's PCI, and there's mm-hmm. AGP. So what are the right. differences? Well, PCI was uh, was the first of those three. Actually, back in the day, there was ISA slots, and you have graphics oh, yeah, on those. Wow. And those are ancient history. And I've said it before on the show. If you have ISA in your system on your motherboard, upgrade the whole darn thing. Don't even think about trying to upgrade I that I can't imagine system. that anybody has, I mean, the, the old Pentiums, the first generation Pentiums would have had ICA maybe? 
Uh, yeah, and the ISA slots you'll see on the board, they're black ones that usually oh, yeah. down around the bottom. Right. If you still have those big long black slots on there, it's, seriously, your system is really out of date at this point, and you should really consider upgrading. And it doesn't cost a lot no. to buy an entirely new system that's more modern. Send it to the Smithsonian or the London Museum in, uh, in London or something like that because they're actually uh, exhibits now. <laughs> or you can send it to a local recycle center, which we've talked about before. That'd be a good place, yeah. Anyways, um, so most people, if they're upgrading and they have an older system, won't even have an ISA anymore. Um, uh -huh. that, like you said, that's ancient history. They'll yeah. be, actually be on PCI, right. which is these white slots that are on. Now, they, those, those PCI slots used to have take uh, modems in there, you used to put sound cards in there, those kinds of things. Yeah, but also, I didn't realize video cards as well. Yeah, at the beginning, video cards did go into those right. uh, slots as well. And uh, they're still in use in, in a lot of cases for the modems and for the sound cards. Uh, they're, they're still a very popular thing to have on motherboards. Um, but uh, a few years ago, the uh, video cards actually migrated to another slot called the AGP, which is the brown one that's sort of pushed in a little bit from the uh, PCI slots. And AGP stands for Accelerated Graphics Port. Mm -hmm. And so that one's dedicated to graphics. It doesn't share with any of the other things that are on your system. Right. It's designed for graphics, and it's designed to give you the best possible experience. Now, wasn't there a, a speed issue with AGP2 that was a two times, four times type thing? Right, when it started out, it was one times, then it went to two times okay. and four times. And, and essentially, that it, it's like with the CD-ROM. You have a baseline, which would be the one times, and then two oh, yeah. times would be faster than right. that, and then so on and so forth. And as games got faster and faster, and graphics cards got faster, oh, yeah. and they required a faster slot. Right, okay. And in general, they weren't uh, compatible. They were compatible in one direction. You could put your one times in the in the faster ones, but you couldn't uh, put your faster, faster ones, ones in the older, older ones. ones. Yeah, that's true. So, but uh, but in the I mean, motherboard you go out and buy today, I suppose uh, most of them now are PCI Express. The newer ones that are coming out are PCI Express. So, what exactly is that? Now, you would think PCI is the same as PCI, right? But mm -hmm. it's not. They're a different slot, and we actually have. Uh, this is a PCI Express graphics card right here, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to try to pop this in here, and you know, uh, oh, tight mismatch it doesn't go it in. It's work. facing in the wrong direction for one thing, so it's yeah. like even doubly not right now, okay. and it doesn't fit into this uh, port either. So right. um, we'll just look. Cap A does not go into slot B, right? And that's one way that you can uh, identify them as well. Just you can do it by the color of the slots. You yeah. can also do it by the the arrangement of the pin. <laughs> Anyways, All right. so the PCI Express. You're right. This is the new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Again, it's uh, it's faster than the old AGP. Mm -hmm. It's way faster than the old PCI. And uh, again, it's it's not dedicated to graphics these days. You actually have uh, PCI Express cards available for a number of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, well, let's look at talk about PCI yeah. Express for a second because it really is an innovation. What was happening was you know the traffic on the motherboard moving around it, moving around the circuits, was getting too slow uh, for the applications that were being in demand, especially as we're moving towards the high definition era uh, and you know it's very graphics intensive and other data intensive applications. So uh, Intel and a bunch of other companies you know got together and said, let's come up with a way of moving data across the motherboard much much faster, and so they. A consortium put together something led by Intel called uh, PCI Express. So the, the, the good news is, I mean, if you bought your motherboard recently or you bought your machine recently, chances are it has PCI Express already. Mm -hmm. If it's a vintage, you know, an older date vintage, maybe two years old, something like that, three years old, you may still have an AGP slot. Yeah, and if you're actually buying a very budget-oriented system, chances are that you'll actually still have AGP on it. Right. That it may not have a PCI Express, or it may just it may have. Uh, PCI Express, but it'll be integrated right onto the motherboard and doesn't have the slot itself. I can tell you one thing. I bought a budget Dell uh, last year, and it didn't have an AGP slot mm -hmm. or a PCI slot at all. I couldn't put an upgradable card in there. I had to. I was stuck with what the adapter on the motherboard. Mm -hmm. It's a budget computer. That was mm -hmm. the way it was. And if you're planning on upgrading your video card down the road, but you're buying the system first, make sure it has that slot on there mm -hmm. so that you can upgrade it down the road. Right. Okay. So we've understand PCI Express and PCI and AGP. Mm -hmm. So what's the next step in, in buying these cards? The next step is um, going down to the store and figuring out what you're going to need. Now, each of the, if, if you're a gamer, most of the games will actually list on the box what types of specs you need. And part of that will be the CPU. But a lot of cases, they'll be, 
the, the graphics card, you know, a minimum type of card and the minimum amount of video RAM that's on the card. Oh yeah, video RAM. So what? Do you, so video RAM, let's, let's talk a bit about that for a second. What right. is it exactly? Right. Well, the video card, I think we should actually back up a little bit okay. and talk about uh, the, the reason for a graphics card in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, it is possible to do a lot of the, the work that a video card does, generating graphics onto the screen on the processor. Uh, of the system itself. Mm -hmm. But what a graphics card does is it takes a lot of that work off of the system itself and puts it onto a graphics processing unit, which is generally hidden behind the, uh, the fan mm -hmm. on side the well, graphics It has its own card. cooling system as well, because it, right. it runs pretty hot, I gather. Right, so it's a... It can it, do. The processor that's on a graphics processing unit is actually, a lot of times, many times more complex and powerful than the one that's actually found on your system, but it's a specialty. A GPU. The GPU. Graphics processing unit. So you have this, the GPU on here. You also have video RAM that's on this, and that's RAM that's dedicated to creating the textures. So when you're creating a 3D world in, uh, in your graphics card, so you're playing Doom, and you're creating this whole environment around you, it's saving that somewhere. And it, and it could do this on your system. Mm -hmm. and this is exactly why there was a problem with uh, the integrated ones, because it actually takes part of your regular RAM and uses it for the video. Right. And, and that slows down the rest of your system. Okay, so, you're running, a, so you're running a system that's maybe got a gig of RAM in it and uh, an onboard vi you know, video adapter, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden this, the whole system's going Ooh. Yeah, you're not likely to run into that issue if you have a gig of RAM, but where it does become more of a problem is if you have an integrated board, chances are you more likely have 256 megs of RAM on your uh, system, yeah. or even 128 right. if it's older. So if you right. have 128 megs of RAM, and suddenly 32 of that is gone for right. the video memory, or 16, right. I mean, that's not insubstantial when you're trying to run Windows but XP. But these guys, the VRAM, they have 128 megs of video RAM, yeah. or 256 megs of even video RAM. Even 512 these well, days. So half a gig of video RAM. And in many wow. cases, the video RAM on this is actually running newer technology than what you'll find on your system. So mm -hmm. DDR2 went into video cards before it went onto the regular motherboard. Oh, right? Now they're running DDR3 on these graphics cards already. So these are really state-of-the-art pieces of technology here. Wow, yeah. And I've gone into physics cards as well that are even higher end and can just literally calculate every particle in the entire world. It's, right. it's just crazy. Physics cards, I love it. And, and we don't need to worry too much about physics cards today. No? No. Why? What's the... What's the, uh, what's the 20 the, second uh, thing on the physics card. Real physics quick. cards are more specialty at this point. People that are really looking for realistic gaming might want to look at it, but uh -huh. uh, it's, it's more for high end specialty applications. Okay, at this so the time being. For Although the time being. That's going to come down onto consumer level at some point in the next couple of years. It will go into mainstream gaming fairly soon, and they'll start bundling physics cards into regular GPUs, and huh. everyone will be a nice, big, happy family. Now, right. when you first started getting graphics cards, yeah. the 3D capability was on a different card, so you would have to put two in the side. I remember that, yeah. So you have 2D and then 3D on a separate yeah, cards, right. and you would chain one through the other. Right. And now it's all on one, and eventually they'll build physics into this, and then eventually they'll build virtual reality into it, and then everything will be on this be, one card. Yeah, right. And you just plug it into the side of your head. That'd be nice. Everything will be photorealism through your glasses. Mm -hmm. It'll be virtual reality. So that's, that's that. And all right. I did want to talk about one other thing. Mm -hmm. well, I'm just going to put this Well, down. the other thing is, actually, before we go, well, okay, one, you have the one item, I have one item, too. Yes. So, uh, brands, ATI versus NVIDIA versus who else? That's pretty much pretty it. Pretty much it. <laughs> now, when you're going yeah. into uh, integrated graphics, you do have a few other choices. Mm -hmm. You have S3, which I believe is owned by VIA now. Yeah. You have uh, Intel is a big one, of yeah. course. They uh, put it into all the Intel boards and um, things like the MacBook on, on notebooks. Mm -hmm. um, now, that, that's probably worth mentioning is notebooks aren't easily upgradable for the video components. That's true, so this yeah. is, We're talking desktops. Desktops here, here yeah. Um, and also, we mentioned you said S3 is owned by uh, VIA, um, ATI is now owned by uh, AMD. AMD. Oh. And, and the funny thing about that is NVIDIA and AMD were just like this for the longest time. The NVIDIA was going onto AMD motherboards, the chipsets were going in there, so it's just sort of thrown the whole world for a loop. But right. if both of these companies are very smart, they'll just keep things going as planned. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA will work with Intel chipsets and vice versa, ATI will work with Intel. So no major impact there. Hopefully not. But not, not in the long term, anyway. You never know. Companies right. are a bit weird sometimes. Yeah, understandable. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my point. What's your point? Final point? Well, there's this new uh, thing that's come along over the last couple of years. NVIDIA really started it all, um, where you actually have multiple graphics processors units linked together in parallel, where you're getting one of them to do the main job, and then it'll rely on the second graphics processing unit 
if need be. And what you need for that is a second car in your system. Right. Um, and we've got here, in this machine right here, we've got two graphics cards. Mm. Um, now, for these ones, the NVIDIA solution is called SLI. Mm -hmm. And the ATI solution is called Crossfire. Mm -hmm. And what it involves is two PCI Express slots on your system beside each other and two cards that are matched. They've got to be evenly matched. Right. In and the sense that they have to be the same model? They have to be the same model. Okay, yeah. Um, you can possibly tweak it so that you're not using exactly the same card as long as they're the same other specs, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't count on it. Okay. It's, it's always best to get the two of exactly Identical the same. Identical twins. Yes. All right, there you go. And, um, and then with the, in the case of the NVIDIA card here, the SLI, there's this little bridge right here that oh, cool. uh, connects the two together. This is like a totally extreme geeky kind of tip. I love it. It is. And, it's great. And I did uh, some testing on this uh, with these SLI cards. We've got two right. of them here, uh, Gigabyte's uh, um, GeForce 7600 GT cards. Right. And they were kind enough to send those to me for testing. So I tested Yay, them NVIDIA. out. Yay, NVIDIA. Hooray. Um, and a yay gigabyte for, for sure. NVIDIA actually doesn't make the cards themselves. Oh. ATI does. <clears throat> Both of them license out to other companies. Right, okay. Um, so that's one thing maybe worth mentioning. It's sort of trivia more than anything else, really. Um, where you uh, run into the advantage of something like this is when you're adding anti-aliasing into your card, which smooths out the edges and makes things a little bit less rough. When you're just doing regular, run-of-the-mill processing, SLI doesn't add a whole lot of advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't imagine Crossbar adds a whole lot of advantage, too. Now, so you're running 1024 by 768 or 800 by 600, you're sort of even up with one card or two cards. When you start getting to massive resolutions like 1280 by 1024 or 1600 by 1200, 1900 by whatever, when, when you're getting into resolutions like that, then you're definitely going to see the advantages of harnessing two GPUs together. Right, very good. Cool. Um, and finally, one point I wanted to make is if you have an old machine, you say you have a Pentium 2 or a Pentium 3, don't go out and, and, and install a high-end video card. What you're going to do is basically put a big fat engine on an old Chevy Nova with that. So. In the end, it's going to be completely overpowered the system. It'll be completely unbalanced, and you're not going to get any value out of that high-end video card. So you have to yeah. match your video card with the machine that you have right now. Right, yeah. So if you're, um, if you're looking to upgrade and you have that old Pentium 3, upgrade the whole system. If you've got a low-end Pentium 4, you'll get a little bit more value out of upgrading the graphics card by itself. You can generally get a bit of a boost going from a integrated graphics to an add-in graphics card. Right. So that's, uh, that's not so big a deal. Right. All right. Well, let's take a, um, a look at another message from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. It's Camtasia Studio, the fabulous screencast software from TechSmith. Record what's on your screen, narrate it, and share it online. Create demos, screencasts, training, and more. And rest assured, Camtasia Studio is made by wholesome programmers in Okemos, Michigan, the home of the hardiest geeks around. Quick to learn, easy to use, it's Camtasia Studio. Download your free trial and start screencasting today. What well, was good? <laughs> See, now I got you doing it. <laughs> All right, just uh, some final messages. As usual, uh, we want to put your photograph on our TV here in the background. So send uh, your photographs uh, under one meg, please, to uh, feedback at labrats.tv. Picture of you, your wife, your husband, your cats, your dog, your kids, whatever. Send us pictures and we'll put them up here. Number two, if you have feedback for us, show ideas, that kind of thing. Uh, feedback at labrats.tv. You should just do this. My voice is going. I know it is. It's sort of uh, that's what happens when you I get so into this. I'm excited about. I, I think I got a bit of dust from doing this as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for us. My name is Andy Walker, and we'll see you next time. Uh, of course, from him too. I'm Sean Carruthers. He's from Sean Carruthers. Bye bye. Are you ready?
Hello everybody and welcome to Lab Rats. My name is George Jetson. <laughs> and today on the show, we're going to show you how to fix your flying car. <laughs> <laughs> because Astro made a little piddle in it. <laughs> 